actually made a Beyonce cardigan inspired by this outfit and this performance so stay tuned for that hi I'm back again and you know the drill this is act three of this whole collection vlog series you can find my portfolio on my website and you can also read more basic fashion history posts that I've made on my WordPress website on each era that I covered regarding just basic fashion history now let's get into what act three is about act three is called masterpiece and it is part three to the three-part act of my my collection called Dark Knight of the Soul. I'm going to be explaining what Dark Knight of the Soul is. So Dark Knight of the Soul means a spiritual darkness, kind of like going through the darkest moments of your life. And it's about feeling lost, alone, all the things that we go through when we feel separated from what we know in our entire lives. And during this process, we are unlearning everything that we've been taught by society, how we grew up, how we were raised, cultural conditionings, religious upbringings, everything of that nature. And we're kind of like going through sort of like a detox of that. And Dark Knight of the Soul, basically, going through a crisis, it can be triggered by a certain traumatic event in our lives that make us start really questioning everything about ourselves and our lives and our faith and how we see the world and essentially our relationship to God, what we believe in. And I wanted to explore that in this concept in a creative sense of how we were taught how to creatively express ourselves and how that affect our artistic soul and everything we've been taught. Imagine all of that being severed. Kind of like having your superpower being severed and gone. Who are you? What kind of person are you? A great example of this is like the show Avatar The Legend of Korra, when Korra went through a whole character arc of being proud of who she is as an avatar and going through so many obstacles and fighting so many different villains and life hurdles that really tested who she is as the avatar, where she completely completely hit rock bottom and suffered from trauma and PTSD and really start to question is is this what being the avatar is like is being the avatar worth it and we can see that throughout her journey if you've seen the show it's kind of like walking through a dark tunnel and finding the light at the end of the tunnel after going through such a period of darkness you finally reach rebirth or spiritual awakening and a new profound relationship with your spirituality and your soul purpose in life so i really wanted to capture that creatively where i had this whole journey of everything that we've been taught in terms of design and fashion and have that be deconstructed over time in every different parts and era of this act to re-emerging into finding your own identity and style with creating what you want and that was essentially the goal of this collection was to show and also reach a point where I'm confident in my artwork with what I create and find my own identity as a designer. So before we dive into all these cardigans and sweaters, it's briefly and loosely covers the modern era. So I'm going to be referencing a lot of like modern stuff that I grew up with and also that I've seen in pop culture or just culture in general with the whole globalization of the world. You can really see an in-depth research on that if you were to like research on my blog or like YouTube videos that have analysis and essays on the modern era, trends as each decade goes by, etc, etc. So this is just loosely inspired by that and yeah, I'm just gonna take you on that journey with me. So enjoy! The first cardigan I released for Act 3 is called Lotus and I've been trying to do floral cardigans for the longest time so I figured that right now would be a great opportunity to do that for this act. And the lotus flower is deeply symbolic in my culture. I am Southeast Asian and the lotus flower has a spiritual meaning to it. And I like the symbolism of what the lotus flower means. It means enlightenment, spirituality, it's muddy roots growing in through the murky waters, blossoming into a flower. It's beautiful. So I just did a simple granny square cardigan for this. This is the back side with the granny squares arranged with the lotus granny squares that I made. 
the granite square is a simple solid color and the sage green teal green color that I previously used I just sewed it all together about 14 squares to the back side and the front side it's the same construction I did about seven squares with two triangles arranged in a sort of checkered formation except it's in the same solid color and I just sewed it all together this is the middle front ribbing the solid color is the same throughout and these are the sleeves with the granny stitch worked in the round. I did the cuffing ribbing first and then I worked my way from bottom to top using the granny stitch. And this is how the front side looks like. I did it with this periwinkle button in the front and I like how simple it is. Sometimes simple is beautiful for this cardigan and I didn't need to do too much to it. And this is the back side of the lotus flower cardigan. I like how there's spacing in the back side for this cardigan. You can actually make a rose granny square cardigan too in like different colors. Like there's actually many possibilities with the color combinations for this cardigan. Here's me modeling and wearing it. I just paired it with simple light wash jeans that are distressed. And this cardigan is pretty simple. It could be paired with anything. I recommend steaming it to loosen up the yarn, which I didn't do here in this video, but afterwards I did. The next floor cardigan that I worked on is the Daisy Granny Square cardigan, which I've been wanting to do since forever. And I also plan to release a pattern for it, which I already have out in my Etsy shop shop and Ribbler shop. This cardigan was just gonna be plain simple old daisy granny squares and it's gonna be for people that are beginner level that want to learn how to make a floral granny square design for themselves. This daisy granny square is just a bunch of daisy granny squares put together, sewn together with ribbings. If people want to make a bigger size, I just suggest adding another row to the granny squares and arranging it in the same amount and way that I already have out in the pattern. Front side's the same thing and the sleeves are all also the same. I just count the amount that I need for it. So you can do this in any color combinations that you like. There's a lot of freedom here to pick any color choice that you want. For me, I did this like bamboo green color for it. For the sleeves, I did 12 granny squares and just fold it in half and just added cuff ribbings at the end and just sewed that all together into the cardigan. And here's how the cardigan looks like for the front side. It's pretty simple. I did white buttons. The ribbing is what you learn in the skill of the pattern besides the granny square but it's pretty simple like this is probably a very beginner friendly cardigan that i recommend starting with besides you know your simple standard double crochet cardigan and here's how the back side looks like it's just a lot of granny squares put together which teaches you a really good skill on how to assemble a granny square cardigan and here's me modeling it wearing it i wore this with this forest green cargo pants that i have yeah it could be paired with anything i could do any color combinations i plan to do different color combinations for this and probably changing the daisy color as well the last botanical cardigan that i'm putting out is called crossing inspired by animal crossing and i wanted to do a simple hexagon granny square type of cardigan Cardigan, which I've seen a lot of since last year where a lot of people were doing different color combinations of how to make their hexagon cardigan So I thought I'd take a try at making this cardigan I just did four screen ribbing and this is how the front side looks like I just extend it using the granny stitch The good thing about this cardigan is that if you use one color for the body parts of the card cardigan It will just be blended in and you can't even tell like where the stitches stop or start So I think that this is like a really good pattern to work with if you are just trying to make a simple quick and easy hexagon cardigan this is the back side pretty sim simple plain i used a sage green color and a forest green color for the rippings and forest green color for the buttons to make it more animal crossing inspired i just did this monstera leaf and add it on top of a granny square lined with a forest green stitch here to make pockets and i just sewed the pockets into the front side to make it complete this cardigan Cardigan, and I liked how the pockets add a little bit more character to it. I love it I would try to make this cardigan again in like multiple different colors and combinations Probably with ombre yarn, which I previously made one with ombre yarn and it turned out really pretty Here's me modeling and wearing it. It's an oversized fit and I Wanted to make this as big as I can at the moment. I liked how oversized it looked It's a pretty good cardigan to like layer over and I paired it with my green card pants. Personally, I like the Animal Crossing vibes to this. It's one of my favorite games and it's something that I feel like healed my inner child whenever I play that game. So hopefully I'll show more Animal Crossing content on this channel.
speaking of childhood, another childhood favorite of mine is the show Sailor Moon, which is one of the iconic anime show ever, and I loved the cats of that show, especially Luna, Artemis, and Diana. I adore the Sailor Moon cats that I had to make a sweater for it. These are the granny sweaters that I came up with for this sweater design. I did black, white, and like a light purple. And the granny sweater is a lilac color along with like a dark purple square. And I also made a moon granny sweater, which I have a pattern out on my Etsy shop. You can learn to make all the granny squares and put them all together along with the ribbing and arrange it in the way that I arrange it and have a really super duper cute cat sweater. I changed my mind multiple times on how I made the sleeves, but I settled with the moon granny squares for the first and third row while the cat's granny square are in the middle row and that to me is um, the type of sleeves arrangement that I went with. It's also available in the pattern. You can make it in any arrangements that you like. Here's how the sweater looked like. It's probably one of my top favorite sweaters I've ever made and I, I couldn't get enough of it. I am in love with it. I think it's probably the best thing I've ever made in my entire life up until this point. Like I've been crocheting for five years and this just absolutely blows my mind how how cute it is i love cats and i love the color palette of this and i love the sailor moon cats here's me wearing it i am keeping this sweater forever and ever i am keeping this and passing this on for generations <laughs> i love this sweater so much the next cardigan is called coquet and it is inspired by the ballet core aesthetic that kind of grew over popularity on social media i'm going to insert some clips from tiktok that kind of explains what coquet aesthetic is But yeah, I wanted this cardigan design to have like pastel colors and also use satin bow ribbon. So the back side, I just did a lemon peel stitch and did like half white, half sky blue. And I repeat the same thing to the front side. I did half white and then did half sky blue on the top. All I did was the lemon peel stitch. You can search that up what that stitch is like. It's pretty easy. And I start off with the ribbing first, then I work my way from bottom to top. For the sleeves, it's the same stitch except it's just in the round i did the cuff ribbing first and then i worked bottom to top using the lemon peel stitch and here's the middle ribbing you can actually get this pattern on my etsy shop under the name coquette cardigan uh, pdf pattern and i crocheted a granny square and glued on a satin bow ribbon for the end of the sleeves and for the pockets and i finished this off with white buttons and i think it's absolutely darling and cute for the whole coquette aesthetic that I have going on with this. I chose this aesthetic because it kind of represents the modern era and also the personally what I've you know grew up with. I used to be a former dancer so I had to take some inspiration from my past where I used to do some form of ballet and really trained in that, in that. so it's kind of an homage to my dance training in the past. I also got these rose embroidery ribbons from Daiso the Japanese shop and I I glued them onto the cardigan to add that little bit of elegance to it. So this is how the front side looks like and I think it, it, it just makes it very elegant. I had the colors in cream and blue for the little mini rose buds and I think it's really adorable. Here's me wearing the cardigan. I just paired it with a white skirt and just I really like how the rosebuds adds an elevation to this piece. I would redo this piece in probably like a baby pink color. That would be really cute. Come on, let's take you back. Let's go get some help. Go get some help. What did you do? What did you do? Perfect. What? On to the next cardigan, which is called Candy Bar. And Candy Bar is actually inspired by Candyland mixed with uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory type of vibe. I wanted to go for a simple granny square pattern, but I also wanted to have a theme to it. So I referenced this like candy chocolate bar kind of design that's like grid-like for this 
cardigan and I really wanted this pattern to be very easy for beginners to learn how to assemble and crochet granny squares and put them together which gives it that like chocolate bar feel to it so I, I thought of it like a, a pink chocolate bar and the burgundy color is like the wrapping color for this so it's kind of like very candy landish and the front and the sleeves are also this constructed the same way it's just granny squares put together as I've previously mentioned in my other granny square patterns and this pattern it just teaches you how to make it with a solid granny square color and here's the sleeves with ribbing this is the middle front ribbing it's the same all of my cardigans are constructed in the same way and here's the front side of the cardigan I went with light pink buttons and all of my cardigans are pretty simple and it's constructed in the same way I think this one was very easy to make and I would do this in different colors I like how simple it was and it it can be worn in any fashionable way that you would like it to be depending on the color that you choose to crochet this in and here's the back side the same it's a grid type of pattern when i steamed it it made this yarn quite soft and loose and it's such a an easy cardigan to put on your outfit and go out in. Here's me wearing it. Yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty simple outfit. You can make this in any colors. I plan to make this in like a green type of palette or just something pretty simple. Maybe like a black and white one. I don't know yet. But check out my shop if you want to learn how to make this cardigan. The next cardigan is actually a pair and it's called Barbie University and it is inspired by Barbie of course but the design itself is very uh, Ivy League preppy school type of design just in the colors of Barbie. I came up with this idea because I obviously love the movie Barbie from last summer. Everyone was all about it and making like their outfits to the whole Barbie theme but I didn't create anything at the time because I didn't have time and I still Still wanted to do a whole Barbie theme so this was made later but still fit the whole theme. The first Barbie cardigan I did was actually crocheted and it was based off of a simple plaid tartan design that I used to have a long time ago but I just changed the colors to make it more Barbie theme and this is how it's made. I just crocheted a simple double crochet panel for the back and the front and also the sleeves. The sleeves are just double crochet in the round after making the cuff, but the technique that I used for this crochet cardigan is surface crochet, which you can like YouTube and look it up. I just surface crochet the line patterns on this cardigan to create the plaid tartan effect that I've wanted. Uh, this is how the back panel, the front panel, and the sleeve panel look like when it has surface crochet on top of it. And this is how the cardigan looks like the crochet Barbie cardigan the front side I just did uh, these light pink buttons for the front side the ribbing's hot pink I love the fuchsia hot pink color paired with the white and the baby pink color it just it just screams Barbie to me this is the back side you can see more of the tartan plaid pattern of this I personally love this because of it it brought back a technique that I used to do way back then. I made like a Burberry plaid kind of cardigan, so I definitely would do this again in different color combinations of the plaid effect. And here's me wearing it paired with a white skirt and my little pink Barbie purse that I never really got to wear. But yeah, this cardigan's really cute. I would do this in different colors, but um, yeah, it's pretty simple to make. It's just surface crochet on top of the cardigan, which you kind of had to plan out the stitch numbers in order to get it to look even. Hi, Barbie. Oh, hi, Alan. There are no multiples of Alan. He's just Alan. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused about that. The next cardigan is actually knitted for the first time of me knitting a tartan plaid cardigan which was a little a bit ambitious because I don't really have much knitting skills and this was going to be made with weight 4 yarn. This is how the back panel looks like with the tartan plaid knit pattern which looks different from the crochet ones. I wanted to create them both 
in the same design just to show the difference between crochet and knitting with this cardigan pattern. This is the front side and these are the sleeves which was a little tricky to learn at first. I had to learn how to increase and decrease but eventually I figured it out and figure out the stitch number amounts after many trial and error. This cardigan took me three weeks to make. Normally cardigans would take me at least a week to make and this being three weeks really tested my patience so I had to YouTube on how to change colors for every row and how to make this like plaid effect on the knitting pieces. Barbie was such a significant movie for women everywhere. We already know this. We know the phenomenon that the summer of Barbie was for everybody and I really love the world of Barbie. Barbie was one of the dolls that I play with along with brats that I collected and it just brought me back to girlhood and it reminded me of just being in love with girlhood. I love the color pink, everything else that's associated with just being a girl. There's probably other video essays out there or blogs or something that explains the whole phenomenon of this that I probably cannot dive that deep into this in this video since I have other stuff I need to cover but this is just me acknowledging and paying an homage to that. This is the final results of the front side for the knit Barbie cardigan. I am proud of myself I could pull this off because not only that this took a long time but I had to learn a lot of new stitches. I would say I would try to do this again in different colors but I would not try to do this for three weeks to make this cardigan. I don't know but it was definitely a labor of love. I was proud of it and I learned a lot. Definitely a must project for crocheters to learn how to knit. This begs the question though, am I transitioning into being a knitter? I'm a crochet dominant kind of person. I've been crocheting for five years and I've tried my hand on knitting. I just don't like how slow it is. However, like the pieces are so satisfying and I love the color work on knitting. Personally, I think that color work looks amazing in knit. However, I love crochet for the detailed stitches and the 3D stitches that knitting can't obviously make. I think the granny squares are pretty and florals that I can make with crochet and how fast I can make them is something that I won't ever like leave behind. But definitely I do love the idea of knitting. I like knitting and I'm gonna explore that more. The next cardigan is inspired by the dark academia aesthetic and it's a vibe that i'm actually personally into because i read and i also like neutral colors i've i'm not actually a very colorful person i don't really personally i don't really like to wear pastels but i make it solely for my own creative purpose and this cardigan was supposed to really show like my own personal taste and style in a cardigan design and i really want it to work with tweed yarn i love tweed it's very classic it's very uh elevated for me so i used some tweed yarn and created like a, a cable cardigan this cable i kind of made up the stitching i think i've kind of learned this like a while ago but i just went based off of memory and i just did this vertical stitching to tie it all together because i know that the tweed yarn was just gonna make this cardigan look elevated the front side i did brown buttons to match the whole aesthetic of this. I also ironed my own tags. I bought my own tags for this just to make it like more official. Here's the back side. Pretty simple with stitching. It's just back loop half double crochets with ribbings. Back loop single crochet ribbings at the bottom. A tip that I have for crocheters is that once you learn how to do ribbings and assemble a cardigan, you can literally make any cardigan that you like. You need to know a few stitches, but assembling a cardigan and learning how to do ribbing will take you far. Here's me wearing the cardigan. It's pretty simple. I just pair paired it with like a black outfit. I did have more tweed yarn that I end up making more projects of because I like the old tweed look. I'm also liking how the stores are coming out with more different tweed color combinations with the yarn. So it really feeds into the whole tweed yarn aesthetic that I'm into. Lastly is a chunky knit cardigan that I've recently learned how to make and also it taught me how to knit a cardigan. So here's actually my first cardigan that I've ever knitted. The Barbie one was like second, but this one with chunky yarn, it's easier to learn how to knit and it knits up faster than a wait for yarn. Here's me knitting this yarn. I use Lion Brand Hometown in the colored mustard, I think. Yeah, it was the only chunky yarn that I had a lot of that I needed to practice with but I used bamboo knitting needles and it really helped me learn a lot about 
how to knit and knitting is actually pretty simple it's just two stitches and you just repeat that and there's like a different combinations of those stitches that i had to learn for me right now i'm just sticking with stockinette i am not attempting a cable just yet because i still need to learn how to do color work however so far i'm pretty satisfied that just learning stockinette and how to do some ribbing i was able to create a nice looking cardigan Personally, I am trying to get into, you know, the whole knitting world and it's a little overwhelming to be honest, especially as a crocheter. So let's see how my journey is like being a whole knit influencer after this. But so far, I think knitting is easier in my opinion. Maybe I just haven't tried the hardest stitches yet, but crochet challenged me in so many ways, especially as an artist and as a creative content creator it made me really think outside of the box and grew wrinkles on my brain so i hope to also experience the same thing with knitting but i know that with knitting it's going to be all about colors and playing with colors and playing with intarsia so we'll see how that goes here's the back side it's pretty simple it's a stockinette with the ribbing i did the ribbing first the one-on-one -on -one rib ribbing then i worked the rest in the stockinette stitch which i was surprised it didn't roll up as much the front side it was the same thing it rolled a little bit but it held its shape and i just sewed everything together oh oh yeah i also learned to pick up stitches for the middle part i got like really long like 60 inch knitting needles circular knitting noodle needles and i was able to learn how to pick up stitches this is the sleeve this was me learning how to do increases and decreases for the first time but yeah i'm proud of with how it came out like it literally looked like the cardigans that i would see on pinterest this is how it looks like not bad for a first timer which makes me want to buy more chunky yarn now casting off was actually pretty easy and it looked pretty neat uh one thing i would redo about this cardigan is probably attaching the yarns together whenever i run out uh, i just don't like how i had to hide the stitches but i learned a different technique now with how attaching the yarn so that should really improve my stitch overall how it looks i also ironed on my tag and then i got these rose rose buds from daiso and glued it on to the cardigan to kind of just add that last flair to this design it's floral and cute rather than just having a plain cardigan i wanted to add the, the rosebud embroidery which i think completed the piece here's me wearing it i like the oversized fit and feel it feels really good the yarn's good i would do this cardigan again but in different colors and it makes me want to buy more chunky yarn got myself a fabric shaver and this is a game changer because for those that like knit or crochet or work with yarn there tends to be fuzz and it's a natural part of like you know your projects because of yarn tends to fuzz up so i got a fabric shaver and i've been shaving and it's been so good so far i'm gonna show you guys all the fuzz collects in here and i got a little plastic bag that i'm gonna collect and put so i can like collect over time and use it as stuffing all right a little bonus cardigan design this is my beyonce cardigan so i was inspired by what she wore during her performance of energy and cuff it when i went to go see her in la and i knew i wanted like a colorful checkered design i've been having that idea in mind but seeing her outfit made me realize that's the color palette I want to go with. So I got this like hot pink, sage green, blue, and red color and just did this whole checkered design along with like stripes in the middle. And I just love how colorful it is. Like I like how uh, I took a risk with certain color palettes and this made me realize like how fun colors can be when it looks like it's colors that don't seem to go together, but it does. So I would definitely try to knit this again, but if only if I learn how to do like knit and tarja. <laughs> other than that i love this this is the perfect cardigan ending to end this whole video the reason why this act is called masterpiece is learning to eventually see your work as a masterpiece i've also noticed with crocheters is that they struggle with finding their pieces beautiful and they struggle with seeing their work as worthy of anything especially in comparison to other fiber arts medium out there like knitting or or sewing or whatever it is 
I've noticed is with the developing community for the crochet world, there's this stigma of like crochet being ugly, crochet being the lesser than, and that's been changing these past few years with this resurgence in popularity with crochet. And I'm loving to see people adore and love crochet and find the beauty in it. And that's what Masterpiece is all about. It's finding the beauty of your crochet pieces as artwork. And I like to say that crochet is a reflection of your soul. So what you create as an artist is a reflection of your soul. So if you find your pieces beautiful, you yourself also find yourself beautiful. And I think that's a great way of seeing your artwork. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. That was really fun to make these three vlog videos on this collection that I made last year. It was such a big collection. It spanned the entire year. And I know I didn't cover everything. So you can check out all my social medias and everything that I linked. You can find everything out, all the information on that. If you have any questions regarding my creative process, I can totally talk to you about that. I also have patterns out in my shop that you can try making some of my designs in. And and I hope to make more fun videos like these. Vlogs are fun. And I do have previous collections that I have not covered. So maybe those might come out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye.